got a lot to unpack in this video. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is the fact that the carnivore diet is restrictive. You've probably heard this before. Uh, people say it online, just Google search the carnivore diet or go on Twitter or go anywhere and you're gonna hear people saying the carnivore diet is restrictive. And I'm gonna tell you that that is a lie. There's at least 100 different foods that you can eat on the carnivore diet. And I'm actually gonna take the time and I'm gonna list all of those in the description below. But really, I wanna take up a slightly different subject on the sub, uh, talking about things that are restrictive because due to semantics, people can say things are restrictive and give it a negative connotation. And honestly, we need to have restrictions in our life. If that something is restrictive, just to spread a lie is different than having restrictions. Restrictions are blocks or barriers that you put up or somebody else puts up, which generally people think or do them in order to help you or help others or help the group or help people in general. That's an example of restrictions. People don't drink or drink alcohol or do drugs. That's a restriction somebody puts there so that they can live a happier and better life because the opposite end of that of what happens when you fall into alcoholism or you become a drug addict is a big problem. The ramifications are terrible. So my point here is sometimes you actually need to have restrictions or you yourself need to put restrictions in front of you in life so that you can survive better. And that's really the point. You wanna survive better, you wanna play the game of life better and you wanna succeed. And so if there are no restrictions, it's very hard to accomplish. Like an example is there is a certain speed limit you're supposed to drive. You're not supposed to drive above that speed limit because you could have accidents if you drive above that speed limit. That's a restriction. Let's talk about specifically why people restrict themselves when they come to a carnivore diet. Why do they put barriers there? So let's talk about like your physical body. Restrictions that are negative. So I was talking about we have positive restrictions and negative restrictions, and these are just all my ideas, right? So negative restrictions, irritable bowel syndrome, headaches, backaches, sickness, mental unrest, autoimmune issues, the list can go on and on. And these are things that are wrong with your body that restrict you from being the best you possibly can be. Many of those things that I just listed are self-inflicted by the things that we consume and put into our body. So there's a lack of restrictions creating worse restrictions against you. And like I said, we're the ones eating foods that are creating these problems in our bodies. At the other side of it, positive restrictions, specifically in relationship to your body. You restrict eating carbs, seed oils, junk food, sugars. You restrict yourselves from eating the unholy trinity and all of a sudden you feel better. So you are putting restrictions on yourself that are good, that are helpful, that uh, are going to change your life that are gonna make you lose weight, that are gonna make you feel better, that are gonna make you mentally happier, mentally. So I'm relating this to obviously the carnivore diet because that's what I talk about or an, a low carb diet, a ketogenic diet, uh, because there's lots of lies out there that will keep you away from wanting to eat this way. But you yourself need to learn to not listen to the lies and you have to learn how to sift through those lies. You have to, for yourself, observe firsthand what's gonna work for you or what's not gonna work for you. You have to test it out on yourself. We have to learn to become um, observers, uh, like actively observing things, actively testing things, actively trying things to see what works and what doesn't work and what's gonna help you and what's not gonna help you. And when you do that, you're gonna then realize what's true and what's false because it's only really gonna be true when you see it yourself. Learn to be like observers and critical thinkers. And we need to, sure, we can watch YouTube videos, we can read studies, we can read stuff, but in the end, it, it comes down to you and what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Okay, cool. So specifically, I will give examples about myself. Look, last week I was very, very, very strict. I was being very restrictive. I did good. I lost five pounds. I've been very stalled. Um, because I keep not restricting myself because at times I will do something, give myself excuses to eat something else that's outside of what I know I should eat. Um, this is my channel, by the way. This is my journey on my carnivore experience and on getting myself back together and my health back together. So yeah, I make mistakes. And maybe I don't make as many videos as my good friend Carnivore Kip about the mistakes that I make, but I don't think anybody on YouTube promoting a way of eating is 100% perfect 100% of the time. It's it's an impossibility, but we can only do the best that we can. But 
let me go back to my story. Very strict for one week, eating the foods I know will I will lose weight. I will feel good. Uh, yesterday I ate cheese. I sh cheese is carnivore technically. Um, it doesn't do me good. It doesn't do me any good, and yet I love it. I also made my disastrous popcorn because it was movie night, and you, I try not to eat it, but I was like, oh, I can just do it this time. Guess what? I woke up this morning, and all of my efforts for the entire week gone. I gained five or six pounds in one fell swoop. Of course, that's water. Of course, but it's still going to take me one more week to get back to where I was yesterday. So you have for me, I have to have very specific things that I eat. Uh, in addition, by the way, I woke up with a headache. That's worse than the five pounds. Um, my nose was, is stuffy. Uh, that's from the dairy. So like there's stupid things that we do to ourselves, and we got to learn and keep in mind why we're doing this. And I'm just saying this to be totally honest so people don't think, oh, she's so perfect. Look at her, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm not. I'm 100% not perfect. But choosing the carnivore lifestyle has been the best thing for my health that I have ever done in my entire life. And that is a true story. And you can watch other videos where I talk about all of the things that is healed in my body. So when I choose to eat the popcorn, because it's my choice, I'm the one doing it. Nobody's putting the food in my mouth. I'm doing it. I'm choosing to do something that's actually in the long run or short term harming me. So that's, that's, those are my choices, but I know what it does. And I know the effects that it's going to have on my body. But then I don't regret it like I'm lying to my audience. I regret having a headache. I regret feeling a stuffy nose because I can't be 100% there the way I want to be there as a, a productive and healthy human being. Anyways, there you go. That's my video about how completely restrictive the carnivore diet is. So I would like to know in the comments if you're doing the carnivore diet and what you think or if any of this advice helped you at all, please let me know. Uh, do me a favor if you're not subscribed yet and you like my content please subscribe for more content and uh, click that little bell thank you so much bye